Hey everybody and welcome to Talking Plants. It's your friendly extension agent on two wheels, Logan Bennett, and today I'm out taking soil samples. And I thought, since I'm already out here, why shouldn't I take you along with me? And while we're doing this, I can show you how to take a soil sample today on Talking Plants. First things first, if we're going to go pull soil samples, we need to have the right tools to do that. So what do we use to pull soil samples? Realistically, your toolkit can be pretty small here and you can still be successful. The main thing that you need to have is something to dig with and a bucket. I carry around a five gallon bucket when I pull soil samples. The main reason for that is I'm usually pulling a lot of them. And we'll talk about how many samples you need to pull when it's time to submit them. Next thing is you need something to dig with. So oftentimes I carry around this. This is a soil probe, you can see it right here. If I come in a little closer, you can see there's a channel here and the goal with this channel is to actually plunge this into the ground, it pulls out a core right here, and then you push that into the bucket. Pro tip, if you're gonna carry around one of these, I recommend also carrying around one of these. A screwdriver is much easier to get into that channel to push the soil out than your finger. If you don't wanna go get a soil probe, you can get a shovel. This is just a regular shovel. I think it's designed to uh, push through cement or something like that, and I like it because it holds up to clay really well. So it's got a short head, it's kind of a, uh, not a very wide head either, and I also like that because I'm not trying to pull out a giant wad of soil when I'm taking soil samples. So this really works for me, especially if I'm working in heavier soil. So I'm gonna show you guys how I take soil samples, uh, starting with this field. This used to be a different garden bed and we're about to put in new plants, so since it's coming out of fallow and into a new crop, we want to take a soil sample here. It'll give us an idea of how, many, uh, how much nutrition was taken out of here before, if we need to add anything before we plant, if there's any problem areas, that kind of thing. So first things first, I'm just going to take a sample right here. My goal is to get six to eight inches down into the ground. And the reason I'm doing that is because this field was already uh, cropped before. Because it's been cultivated, I'm going to go about six, eight inches. Now, if it was an uncultivated field, I would try to do the same, but really, I would just go until I hit hard ground. Um, if that's eight inches, great. If it's 10 inches, that's okay too. Next thing, since I took a sample right where I'm standing, I don't wanna take another sample here. I'm gonna to walk to a random spot in the field, uh, maybe right here, and I'm gonna take another core. And the goal here is to get about 20 cores, 10 to 20 cores, and put them in the bucket. So there we go. We got another core right there. And I'll show you what these cores look like out of this particular tool. I'll walk over there and show you. There we go. So I'll just bring this over. So this is the Dutch auger that I'm using right now. Once again, you could do the same thing with a shovel. The reason I like this is because it doesn't make a big hole. It gets just about as much soil as I want. So that's what the core looks like in this. And then once you have that core, you just push it out into your bucket. Easy. All right, so I've walked around, I've taken my 10 or 20 cores, they're randomized in the field and they're in a bucket. Now what? Next thing I do is take that bucket, take my soil in there and just mix it up. The goal here is we're making a single sample that is composite of all of the cores that we pulled. And this is where it comes in handy to have a pen and a bag. Because once the sample is mixed, you pour it into a bag and you label it. So in this case, we might label this fallow field. But wherever you're taking your samples, you have a name for it probably. Go ahead and name it that. And that way when you send it in, you can look at it when it comes back and know, oh, that was in this field or that was in this bed. And now I can see the results for that specific. Well, you might be thinking, well, that's all well and good, but what happens if I don't garden in the ground? What if I'm in a raised bed? Well, good news, I have a solution for you too. Instead of using a shovel or an auger, some kind of sampler like that, we're just gonna use a simple trowel. And we still wanna pull multiple cores here, but since we have a smaller area, maybe we don't need to pull as many. So I'm just gonna go down, pull another core, and here's another thing, pro tip here. When I'm pulling a core, I don't want all of the excess soil that comes out when I lift up. I just want that six to eight inches of soil that I'm attempting to get, like that, okay? And then the goal would be to go through and maybe do 10 of them here in a raised bed like this. Let's go ahead and pull that core, get the soil you want. That was not a great core. Get the soil you want. Put that in the bucket, combine it up. Once again, we're making that composite sample. Then you're gonna bag it and label it. So in this case, 
This was garlic before. There's a few little pieces left here. I might call this garlic bed. It's just so I have an idea of what's in here. Now that we have an idea of how to take soil samples and how deep to take them, how should you differentiate between one sample to another? Well, in raised beds, it's pretty easy. Typically, we're gonna do one sample per raised bed, one composite, right? So we're doing one 10, 20 core composite sample per raised bed. Now, if we're in a field, that can get a little more tricky. The way I like to look at this is if you're farming fields differently, or if you're gardening fields differently, then they should be different soil samples. For example, I wouldn't wanna take a soil sample that included both blueberries and vegetables, right? Those are farmed differently or gardened differently, so they should be separate samples. Another thing to think about is if there's an anomaly in your bed, then you shouldn't use that as part of your main sample, i.e. if you've got one spot in your field where like five or six plants are sick, but the rest of the field seems fine, that should be two different samples. The sick part should be its own sample, and the healthy part should be its own sample. And the reason for that is because it could be a nutrition issue that's causing those five or six plants to be sick. Alternatively, you could have a disease there, right? But if we're taking that as part of the composite, A, we're messing up our main data, showing what the rest of the field is looking like, and B, we may be hiding that lack of nutrition in that main sample. So we wanna think about that as two different samples. All right, so we spent the time to go collect our cores, we turned them into composites, and now we have soil samples. The next thing to do is take those samples and bag them with something like a Ziploc, and then write the location and the name of that sample on the bag. And ideally, once those get sent off, you'll get the data back with that data on it so you know where those samples came from. Speaking of which, where do you send soil samples? Well, the good news is there's a lot of labs serving Oregon, and so you have a lot of options on where to send those samples. OSU has a document on where to look or what soil labs are serving Oregon. So you can look through that and get an idea of which lab you might want to send them to. And here's a pro tip. Once you start sending your soil to a lab and you decide you like that lab, make sure to stick with it. That way you have the same data set every year or the same testing parameters every year and you can kind of build or begin to build a, a, a data set off of it. You can get an idea of where you're at this year, next year, the year following and kind of get an idea of what you might need to do to get ready to, to, uh, for the following year. All right, everybody, that was how to take a soil sample 101. Hopefully it was helpful and we'll see you next time on Talking Plants.